Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. This session will be the first in a series of videos about function analysis, where we are given a function as an expression of x, and we have to figure out or get an idea of how this function behaves. For example, where is this function positive, where is it negative, and where does it cross the x-axis? Or how does this function behave when x becomes a very large positive or negative number? All of these pieces of information will help us to make a rough sketch of the graph of this function. In this particular session, we'll be focusing on polynomials, which are functions that are made up of powers of x. As always, we will start out very basic to get an idea how this systematic approach works, and the exercises will get progressively more difficult, so feel free to skip around according to your own level you will be able to find the timestamps in the description or the comment section below. With this intro out of the way, let's go into the first exercise. The first exercise will consider this function. f of x is minus 2 times x plus 4. Now we see that this function is a linear function. And we know from linear functions that they are graphically represented by a straight line. So we already have a rough idea what the end result should look like. The first step in the systematic approach of function analysis is to find the special points of this function. What are special points? These are points that will tell us something more about where this function is positive, where it is negative, and how it behaves when x becomes a very large positive or negative number. For polynomials, the special x points will always be plus and minus infinity, which means x becoming a very large positive or negative number. Think for example plus or minus 1 million. And x is equal to 0, where the function will cross the vertical axis. For f of x, the special point will always be where f of x is 0. Why is this a special point? Because when f of x is 0, this means that our graph will cross the x-axis. And it means that our function will change sign. And this means that at this point, our function will switch signs from positive to negative or from negative to positive. Let's calculate now what the function value becomes for our special x points. And let's start when x becomes minus infinity, which as I said, can just be, for example, minus 1 million. We can just fill this in as any other number. So we get minus two times minus infinity plus four. When we are working with infinities, the only thing that really matters is the sign of the infinity. Here we have minus infinity and we multiply it with minus two. And whether it is minus one or minus 10,000 doesn't really matter because infinity is just so large that any number that you can think of is irrelevant. The relevant part is the minus sign we have to multiply minus infinity with minus two. And minus times minus gives plus. So this will tend to plus infinity. So a very large positive number. What about this four? Well, as I said, when we're working with infinities, adding or subtracting numbers doesn't really matter because they all are irrelevant when we're talking about such big numbers. So we know that if X becomes a very large negative number, f of x will become a very large positive number. The next special point is when x is equal to zero. And this again can be very easily filled in. So we have minus two times zero plus four, which is of course equal to four. So we know that if x is equal to zero, our function value will be positive and will be more specifically four. Then we look at our final special x point, which is where x goes to a very large positive number. So plus infinity to represent this scenario. We can also just fill this in. So we have minus two times plus infinity plus four. And we already know that this plus four doesn't really matter. Again, what is important here is to look at the sign which the infinity gets. So we have plus infinity times minus two so we get minus infinity, which means that if x becomes a very large positive number, our function value will become a very large negative number. To end off, we will look at what x we need to have our function value 
across the x-axis. So at what x is our function value f of x zero? Well, this basically means that minus two x plus four, which is our function, is equal to zero. And in this expression, we have to find a value for this x. As you can see, this is simply solving a linear equation. And if you're unfamiliar with this, I gladly refer you to my previous video where I solve such equations step by step. For now, let's just do this quite quickly. So we have minus two X is equal to minus four, or of course, X is equal to two. And we already have our fourth special point. At this point, the heavy lifting is already done because now we simply translate or rewrite the results that we got into a diagram or a table. This table will help us to identify where our function will be positive and where it will be negative. On the first row, the X row, we fill in all of the special points for X. So we had minus infinity, zero, two, and plus infinity. And how do I get these four numbers? Well, we saw that the special numbers for X that we looked at are minus infinity, plus infinity, and zero. And we also found that for X is equal to two, our function will be zero. So these are the four values of X for which we know what our function value is. And we just fill this in. So for minus infinity, we know that we will get plus infinity. So a very large positive number. So we just fill this in. For zero, we found that f of x will be four. So we also fill this in. Then for x is equal to two, we found that this is exactly the x where our function is zero. So where it crosses the x axis. This means that at this point, our function will switch signs. And then for plus infinity, we know that our function will return a very large negative number. Now that we have rewritten our results in this tabular form, we can very easily figure out where our function is positive or negative. We know that at zero, our function changes sign from going from positive to negative or negative to positive. We see that here that we have positive signs. And since our function does not cross zero between all these numbers, we know that in between these numbers, our function will also be of positive sign. Then at zero, it will change sign. So we know that here it will be a minus and minus infinity also gives a minus sign. And this row basically directly shows us the sign behavior of our function, which we will use now to make a rough sketch of our function. To make a sketch, we draw the X axis and the vertical axis is the F of X axis. And we draw several points of which we know the function value. And to draw these points, we look at this row here, the X row. We know that for X is equal to zero, our function will be four. So we can directly draw this on our graph. So X is equal to zero is the vertical axis. And then we write the number four here. So this point will be part of our graph. Then we know that for X is equal to two, our function crosses the X axis. So our function value is zero. So here is X is equal to two, which is around half of four. And we know that our function will cross the X axis here. So this two will also be a part of our graph. Now, because a linear function is a straight line, we know that if we are given two points through which this straight line goes, we can draw this straight line straight ahead. So we know that our straight line will cross four and two here so we can draw it and we see indeed that we get this straight line now we can easily check that our infinity results are also correct because we see that if we go to minus infinity of x our function goes to positive infinity it just explodes and we see that if we go to a very large positive x our function becomes a very large negative number so these also check out. And this is how you approach function analysis in a systematic way. Let's now step it up a bit and go to the next exercise. In this next exercise, we will look at the function f of x is equal to minus x squared plus three times x minus two. 
which is a polynomial of second degree, because the highest power of x is equal to 2. We know about polynomials of second degree that they are graphically represented by a parabola. Now, which kind of parabola we will figure out in this exercise. What we do know, however, already is that it will be a parabola which is pointed downward in contrast to a happy parabola, which is pointing upward. Now, why do we know this already that it is the sad parabola? Because there is a minus sign in front of the x squared. The first step in function analysis of any function really is to find the special points. Now, what are special points? These are the points that will give us some more information of how this function behaves. For polynomials, the special points for x will always be plus and minus infinity and x is equal to zero. And for the value f of x, this will always be f of x is equal to zero. Because at this point, the function crosses the x-axis. And we know that at this point, the sign of the function will switch from positive to negative or from negative to positive. As in the previous exercise, let's just calculate what these function values become for these three special points of x, starting with x going to minus infinity, so a very large negative number. We can just fill this in as minus minus infinity squared plus three times minus infinity minus two. And as I said before, the only important part when working with infinities is the sign of the infinity. And we know here that minus infinity squared will become plus infinity because minus squared always becomes a positive number. So we get minus infinity for this first term. And for this second term, we also have three times minus infinity, which also becomes minus infinity. And this minus two just, well, drops out or it's not really relevant when we're talking about very large numbers. So we see that this simply becomes minus infinity because minus infinity minus infinity just becomes a very large negative number. The next function value that we'll look at is where x is equal to zero, which can also be easily substituted. And this becomes zero squared plus three times zero minus two, which is of course equal to minus two. And we already have our second special point. Let's finish this off by looking at the function value when x becomes a very large positive number, which can also be easily filled in. So we have minus plus infinity squared plus three times plus infinity minus two. And in this case, we actually get minus infinity plus infinity and the minus two again is irrelevant. And at this point, we cannot conclude anything of what this function value becomes because we have the special case where we have minus infinity and plus infinity. And this is not defined. So we don't know whether this will be plus infinity or minus infinity. We just don't know. It could be either two. And at this point, we have to leave this matter here, but we will be able to figure this out later on. Then the other special point is where f of x is equal to zero. So where does our function cross the x-axis? This will be very important to determine where our function is positive and where it is negative. We see that this simply becomes a quadratic equation, which we have to solve for x. So we have a second order quadratic equation, which we have to solve for x in order to get the x for which our function value is zero. And if you're not certain of how to solve these equations, I made a video where I specifically solve many of these second order or quadratic equations. So how do we solve this? So we know that x plus minus, because there will always be two solutions to a quadratic equation, is equal to minus three plus minus the square root of nine, and nine I get from squaring minus three, minus four times minus one times minus two. And again, if this is not exactly clear to you, I gladly refer to you to my other video where I go through these exercises step by step. And we divide by minus two. Calculating this, we get minus three plus minus one divided by minus two. And like I said, we get two solutions here. So if we take the plus sign, 
we get minus 3 plus 1, which is minus 2, divided by minus 2 will give us 1. If we take the negative or the minus sign, we get minus 3 minus 1, which is minus 4, which we divide by minus 2 to get 2. So we have two solutions here. So we have x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 2. And at these two specific points, our function value will be 0. So we will change sign. And as in the previous exercise, at this point, we already did the heavy lifting. What we now need to do is to translate our results that we got into a tabular form where we look at the function value f of x for our specific x's that we found. What are the x's that we are interested in here? So we have x is equal to plus minus infinity and zero. And we have these two solutions that we found, x is equal to one and x is equal to two. So let's write them in this x row in ascending order. So we start by minus infinity, then we get zero, one, two, and plus infinity. And what we do now is just write the corresponding function value for each of these x values. So for x is minus infinity, we found that we get minus infinity, so a very large negative number. So here we simply get minus infinity. Then for zero, we found that we get a function value of minus two. So we can also just fill this in. For x is equal to one and two, well, we simply found these x is equal to one and two, such that if you fill them in, in our initial equation, in our function, we will get zero. So we can just write it right here, zero and zero. And then for x is equal to plus infinity, we didn't know quite yet because we got this odd situation of minus infinity plus infinity. Having this, we can now look at the sign of the function in different regions. We know minus infinity, we get a minus sign. Minus two is also clearly negative. And then here at these zeros, we know that there will be a sign change. If we know that from zero to one, we have a negative sign, and then we have a sign change at x is equal to one, then we know that we get a plus sign from there on out. However, at x is equal to two, we also get a sign change again. So this means that from here on out, we have a negative sign. And because we don't cross the x-axis anymore from two all the way to plus infinity, we know that the sign will be the same. So we know that at plus infinity, we also get a minus sign, in which case we can conclude that we also get minus infinity here. How does this now translate to the graphical representation? Let's draw our axis and see how this looks like. So we have x and f of x, and we now draw on this graph our special points. We know for x is equal to one and two, that our function crosses the x-axis. So let's say that x is equal to one is here, and x is equal to two, one and two. So we know that our function changes sign in these points. We also know that at x is equal to zero, our function becomes minus two. So x is equal to zero is the vertical axis, and minus two will be situated around here. And now we have our three points, through which our graph will go. And we can try to draw our graph. And we know that it will be a negative or a sad parabola. So just to sketch it, we know that it will somehow look like this. However, we now know that it will have to cross these three points. So we do our best to draw a nice enough parabola through these three points. And there we go. And at this point, we can actually check whether we were right with this behavior of the sign of our function. So let's divide our function up into different regions. Then we see that from minus infinity all the way to one, we get a negative sign. And this is true. This is this part right here of the parabola, which is all below the x axis. Then in this part, between one and two, we get a positive sign, which is again true. And then from two all the way to plus infinity, 
we get a negative sign, which is also reflected in this graph. And this is how we got from the function representation as an expression of x, all the way to the behavior of the sign of this function, and at the end, the sketch how this parabola looks like. Let's now go to the third and final exercise. For the third and final exercise, we'll be looking at the function f of x is equal to x to the power of 3 minus 2x squared minus x plus 2, which is a polynomial of third degree because the largest power of x is 3. At this point, it is not quite clear how this function actually looks like graphically. And this is why we will be investigating this function using the same method as we did before. And this method always starts with looking at the special points, which are the points that will give us some more information about how this function behaves, where it's positive, where it's negative, and how it behaves at very large or very large positive and very large negative numbers. For polynomials, this will always be x is plus minus infinity and x is equal to zero. And f of x is equal to zero which will tell us where the function changes sign, because at this point, the function goes from positive to negative. Again, we can just fill this in. So we have f when x goes to minus infinity, which is equal to minus infinity to the power of three, minus two times minus infinity squared, minus minus infinity plus two. And again, it's the signs that are important when working with infinities. And we know that a minus sign to the power of three will again be a minus sign. So we get minus infinity, minus this two doesn't really matter, so it's irrelevant. But what does matter is this minus sign, because we know that minus minus infinity squared will again be minus infinity. And here we will get minus minus infinity, which is well, rather unfortunately, plus infinity, because as we saw in the previous exercise, this means that we do not have an idea how this function behaves when x becomes very large negative number, because we have minus infinity plus infinity, so we have to leave it like this for now. The next special point for x is when x is equal to zero. And this will always be very straightforward, because we can just fill it in. So we get zero to the power of three minus two times zero squared minus zero plus two. And this plus two is the only thing that remains. So we have that the result is two. Then the third special point is when X becomes a very large positive number. And this we can find by simply filling it in. So we have plus infinity cubed minus two times plus infinity squared minus plus infinity plus two. And again, we will be looking at these signs only here. So we get plus infinity minus plus infinity squared is minus infinity. And we again see that we will not get a satisfying result from this because here we get also minus infinity and we get plus infinity minus infinity, which doesn't give us any conclusive answer. So from this section alone, we only got that from when x is equal to zero, f of x will be equal to two, which is a positive number, which will help us out in the end. Let's look now at the other special point, which is finding the x for which our function value is zero. And in this case, this boils down to solving this third order equation in x which is not straightforward and will often, which in this case boils down to solving this third order equation in X, which is not at all straightforward and will often ask a lot of calculation. However, what do we know about third order equations? We know that it will have always three zeros. So it will have three solutions. And this means that we can rewrite this equation as the following product of terms. So x minus z1 times x minus z2 times x minus z3. And z1, 2, and 3 are actually the solutions that we look for in this equation. Because if we fill in this solution, then we will get, if x is z1, this will be 0, and thus 
the entire thing will be zero. If x2 is z2, then this term will be zero, and so the entire product will be zero. And if x is equal to z3, then this term will be zero, and the entire product will also be zero. So what we look for is z1, z2, and z3. And these will be the three solutions to our third order equation. Now, in general, this will need a lot of calculations. However, if you come across such a third order equation in the wild, what will always be a good idea is to fill in x is equal to one and x is equal to minus one, because you might just be lucky and one or minus one being one of the three solutions. And you will be able to find out in a very swift fashion. So let's fill in x is equal to one. So we get one to the power of three minus two times one squared minus one plus two which is equal to one minus two minus one plus two, which is indeed equal to zero. And we already found our first zero. So we know that Z one is equal to one. Let's test our luck again with X is equal to minus one, which means that we get minus one cubed minus two times minus one squared minus minus one plus two. And this becomes minus one, because minus one cubed is minus one, minus two, because minus one squared is one times minus two is minus two, minus minus one becomes plus one and plus two. And again, we have zero. So we are lucky again, and we have found our second zero. So what we know now is that we can rewrite our equation as x minus one, which is our first zero, times x minus minus one, which is our second zero, and x minus z3. And we still have to find our third solution, our third zero point, which is z3. How do we find this z3 now? Well, we know that in our original equation, we had this plus two, which was the only term that did not have an x multiplied by it. So it means that if we multiply this minus one with this plus one, and this minus z3, that this has to be equal to plus two, because only then will these forms be equivalent. So we get minus one times plus one times minus z3 is equal or has to be equal to two. And of course, we find that this is only true when z3 is equal to two. And we already found our third solution. So to recap, we now found three x's, so x is equal to one, x is equal to minus one, and x is equal to two, such that if we fill it in in our original third order equation, that f of x is equal to zero. So we found our three solutions where our function crosses the x-axis and thus changes sign. And at this point, the heavy lifting is already done. And what we can do now is fill all of our solutions that we found in this tabular form to give us more insight in how this function behaves. So which points do we have? We have, of course, minus infinity and plus infinity on both sides of the spectrum. Then we have zero and we have one, minus one and two. So we have minus one, zero, one and two. And for all of these points, we know what the function value will be. So we can just fill this in. So for x is equal to minus one, one and two, we already know that the function value will be zero because it's exactly these x's for which our f of x is zero. That's how we calculated them. So we know that here we get zero, zero and zero. And at these points, the function will switch signs. These are very important points. For x is equal to zero, we calculated that our function value will be two. So we already are able to fill this in. So we get two here, which is a positive sign. Then for minus infinity and plus infinity, we still don't know. But if we now look at the behavior of the sign of the function, so plus or minus, we can determine or figure out what the sign will be in minus and plus infinity. So we know that at zero, 
our function will change sign and only at these points will our function change sign. And we know that two is a positive number. If the positive number two, for example, will have to change sign when it crosses one and it crosses minus one, then we know that from this point, it will be a negative sign. And this particular negative sign will be negative all the way to minus infinity. So we know that this will be minus infinity. Then on the other side, we see that this minus sign here will again change sign at this point, at the x equal two point. And from here on, it will be a plus sign. And since the function does not change sign between two all the way up to plus infinity, we know that here it will also be a plus sign and thus at plus infinity, we will get plus infinity. Let's now translate what we found onto the graphical representation. And let's see how good of a sketch we will be able to draw given this information. So we have x and f of x. And because we don't quite know how this function will look like, as was the case in the first and the second exercise, we will first indicate the different regions where our function will be positive and negative. And to do this, we will first draw our special points, our special x points on the x axis. So we have two over here, then we have one, here we have zero, and here we have minus one. And we know that in each of these three points, our function will be zero. That's what we found in this row. And this is exactly where our function will change sign. So if we just indicate the regions that are formed by these points, then we know where our function will be positive and negative, because we know that between minus one and one, our function will be positive. So here we will be positive. Then we know between one and two, it will be negative. And from two on out, it will again be positive. And also from minus one out to minus infinity, it will be negative. So this already gives us an idea how our function will look like. It will be negative, positive, negative, and positive again. What we also know is that zero at x equal to zero, our function will be two. So that will be around here. So now we can try to draw our graph between all of these points. So we know it will go to minus infinity if x goes to minus infinity, and it will go to plus infinity if x goes to plus infinity. Then let's start at minus infinity. So it increases, crosses the x-axis as minus one, goes to two, then goes back down again because it has to cross the x-axis again at one, becomes negative, and then it has to come up again because again it has to become positive by crossing the x-axis as two again, and then it will go to plus infinity. And this is roughly how our function will look like. So it will be negative here, then it will have a positive region, a negative region again, and then lift off to infinity again for the positive part. This brings us to the end of this first video on function analysis, where we looked at polynomials in specific. I hope by now you're more familiar with the systematic approach of function analysis. And in future videos, we will look at functions more complex than polynomials. However, the same systematic approach will still be valid. As always, if you have a question or a suggestion for a topic for a future video, just let me know in the comment section below. If you liked the video, give it a like. And if you want to get notified for future releases, hit the subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.